Now, mathematically speaking, there are many ways of looking at um, the evolution of a system that is embedded in a larger system, what we call the environment. Let me start with perhaps um, the most common among physicists, known as the Krauss representation. We know that the evolution of the whole, of the isolated system that is composed of the system of interest and the environment is unitary. And we write this unitary evolution as follows. The state of the system of interest tends uh, the state of the environment. What is important here is that they are not entangled. They are not initially not correlated in any way. Evolves to sum of uh, k operator E sub k acting on state psi tends uh, the corresponding state of the environment E sub k. Now, um, we assume that, uh, well, we don't assume, actually, we, we can write it in such a way that the states of the environment form an orthonormal basis. And um, all we require from uh, these operators that we call now the Krauss operators or the error operators is um, the following um, relation. So sum over k, e dagger sub k, e k is equal to the identity. So it is e dagger sub k, e sub k in this order. So I just the dagger is on the first operator here. The other way around, uh, doesn't necessarily hold, so there will be a special cases where it does, but, but in general it is this condition that we require uh, for this evolution here to be unitary and uh, as you remember this condition means that the probabilities, so the normalization of uh, the corresponding state vectors are preserved. So um, now our task is now to get rid of the environment. In, in this diagram here, you can see the evolution of the whole. So we know that the evolution of, of um, the system plus the environment is unitary. But now we want to get rid of the environment and we are looking at the system alone and we are asking ourselves the question, how is this system evolving? So what we can do now, let's, let's we, we, of course, we have to deal with the density operators now because even though we start with a state that is a product state, things can get entangled. So let's express the input and the output in terms of density operator. So we look at the projector now on state psi. So that's the density operator associated with the system at the very beginning. Tensor, the environment that is in state that is described by the projector on some state E. By the way, you know, assuming that the environment is in a pure state is not a big deal. Um, we can always expand the environment to include just about everything that we can include in, and, and just end up in some sort of a pure state. Um, so now this will evolve and it will be sum over KL. And I have here E sub K acting on Psi. And then this is a projector on Psi. Here will be E L dagger and uh, tensor E K E L. Right. So that's I just took this equation, this expression here, and turned it into um, projectors on both sides. So now that we have uh, um, a relation between the density operators at the input and at the output. And so we know now that in order to get rid of the environment, we have to trace over it. So that's uh, very obvious, so that we uh, will have at the input the, just, you know, the initial state of the system, which is Psi. Therefore, the density operator is the projector on Psi. And uh, when we do the tracing on the right-hand side, so the final state will be equal to sum over KL E k projectile psi E l dagger, and then I'm just tracing over the environment. So tracing over this uh, operator here will give me a number E l E k. 
but we already know that uh, those states form an orthonormal basis. So this is equal to Kronecker's delta ELK. Hence, uh, this expression here is equal to sum over, now just we have one index, sum over K, E, K, Psi, the projectile Psi, E, K, dagger. But now, of course, we can also consider a more general state of the system that uh, can always be expressed as a, as a mixture of pure states. So, so this holds in general, not only for the pure states of the system, but for any, any state of the system. So we can say that if our system is initially described by some density operator rho, then the evolution of this density operator can be written as sum over k e sub k rho e k dagger. So this is the the compact expression here. Let me just make sure that I just frame it nicely so that you remember it. And when we write subdynamics when we write the evolution of a system embedded in a larger system in this way um, we say this is actually a Krauss representation of of the evolution of the open system and of course we we require that uh, this condition here is satisfied so e sub k could be any operators as long as they satisfy this condition here so in general we now we have a situation that uh, the joint system, environment plus the system, undergoes some unitary evolution. So let me just write it as U, U dagger. You can think about uh, uh, this being described by some density operator. It's, it's, it's usually a pure state, but you, know, you can think about projector. So you put here the density operator of the combined system. So that's a unitary evolution of the whole. U, whatever the initial state of the combined system is, U dagger. But now, when we restrict our attention to the subsystem, and we are just saying, okay, just forget about the environment. I want to know what is the mapping um, system to system. What is this kind of evolution here without referring to the environment? So now we know that this can always be written as sum over k, e sub k, something here, e dagger k, and that something here is the density operator, the initial density operator of the system. So this is just one way of looking at uh, quantum dynamics of an open system, a very convenient one and very useful, especially when we start talking about quantum error correcting codes, we will be looking at this expression a lot. Um, but you know, one thing that uh, you may wonder is, the environment is, is, is a big thing, right? So it can be humongous. So, so that, that there could be many, many degrees of freedom there. And therefore, the dimension of the Hilbert space could be huge. So are we now saying that we have like a zillions of those Krauss operators here in order to describe this dynamics? So that's, that's a question number one. The question number two is, uh, you know, clearly the choice of um, the Krauss operators depends on the basis that we pick up for the environment. The question is, okay, we change the basis here um, we are going to, and we, and we can choose any basis, right? So we can, we can, we have a freedom of, of choice here. So that means that uh, if we modify, if we switch into another basis in the environment, we will then be dealing with a different Krauss operator. So clearly that the, the choice of the Krauss operator is, uh, is not unique. Um, to the same unitary evolution, we with, uh, with initial condition where you have a state of the environment fixed. Um, so the same sort of map of the system to the system at some time later on 
can then be described with in many ways using using Krauss operator. So the Krauss representation is not unique. So the question is um, how many Krauss operators we really need, and uh, another question is of course how different Krauss operators referring to the same mapping to the same uh, dynamics, uh, how are they related to each other? 